Dark Souls is an amazing series, and as much as I like being surprised, I usually can't help but do a little homework before getting started. I like to know which classes will work best for my playstyle, what items are actually rare, and how the weapon upgrades work. Without spoiling more than the tutorial area and the hub world NPCs, we hope to prepare you for your journey, Ashen One. Here are the nine character stats. Vigor is health points, attunement is focus points and bell slots, endurance is stamina, vitality is equipment burden, intelligence is spell requirement and damage, faith is miracle requirement, with pyromancy being both intelligence and faith based. Luck is item discovery, Poise is not affected by your stats, only your equipment. Physical damage types are Standard, Strike, Slash, and Thrust. Special damages are Magic, Fire, Lightning, and Dark. Status ailments are Bleed, Poison, Frost, and Curse. You have three weapon slots per hand, four ring slots with a special slot for Covenants, ten belt slots, and five quick inventory slots. Focus points drain with magic and weapon arts, but refill with the Ashen Estus Flask. The starting class's attribute points are based on their level. The lower the level, the less points, but also the higher the cost of the next level. Deprived is level 1 and has 90 points, a 10 in each stat. You start with a club, which is an okay strike damage weapon, a weak plank shield, and a loincloth. Knight is level 9, with a total of 98 points, with 15 in vitality to wear the Heavy Knight's armor which offers good physical and fire defense as well as high poise. A 13 and 12 in strength and dexterity allows use of many weapons including your starting longsword and the Knight's shield which has 100% physical reduction. Mercenary is level 8 and the highest dexterity of any starting class which allows you to wield the Cell Sword Twin Blades which becomes two swords when dual handing. The Sellsword set is light, with a good defense and poise for its weight. Warrior is level 7 and the highest strength and vigor of any starting class. The Battle Axe is slow, but deals the most physical damage of all initial weapons. The Round Shield has 86% physical defense, but with your high HP, you can take the damage. A 6 in Attunement allows for a couple of the War Cry weapon arts, but you will need to add 4 points for your first spell slot. The Northern set has high physical and frost defense, but the poise is low compared to weight. Herald is level 9, and with a 13 in Faith, is second only to the Cleric. You start with Heal Aid. Using the Talisman's weapon art adds poise for casting additional miracles. Equipped with a spear, which you can poke from behind with your kite shield, which has 100% physical defense. Your spear's weapon art, Shield Splitter, has a deadly long reach. You have second highest vitality at 12, which still puts you over 50% equipped load when fully geared up, but does have good physical defense and poise. Thief is level 5 with the highest luck of 14, a stat that can be hard to see rewards from early in the game. Your second highest stat is Dexterity of 13, allowing you to use Short Bow and its weapon arts of Rapid Fire but be careful as arrows are limited and you can only carry 99 arrows of each kind. This is the only class that starts with a bow. The bandit's knife has a bleed effect, but also does the least amount of damage of all starting weapons. With the iron round shield, it is better to parry than block. The thief's mask and deserter set is light and offers okay physical defense and poise for the weight. The assassin is level 10 and has the second highest dexterity of 14 and is tied with the Cleric for the second highest attunement of 14, giving you plenty of FP for weapon arts and sorcery. Your starting weapon is an Estoth, a thrusting sword that has the Shield Splitter weapon arts. Using your Sorcerer's Staff to cast Spook allows stealth and no fall damage, which is perfect for the sneaky backstabs and drop attacks. The target shield is ideal for parrying. The Assassin set has good physical defense and resistances, but low poise. Sorcerer is a level 6 with 16 both intelligence and attunement, a 7 in vitality, strength, and faith, and 12 in luck and dexterity. You start with Soul Arrow, Heavy Soul Arrow, and the Young Dragon Ring to boost sorceries. The Ashen Estus Flask and Focus Point system make the Sorcerer very strong early on. You have just enough dexterity to wield the Mail Breaker, a slash and thrust blade with decent damage but limited reach perfect for weaker enemies so you don't waste your FP. The Sorcerer's set is light with minimal physical defense and resistances and almost no poise. 
Pyromancer is level 8, with 14 in both Intelligence and Faith, as well as 12 in both Strength and Attunement. The Hand Axe is short but powerful, and the Pyromancy Flame casts Combustion as its weapon art. You start with Fireball, which has a decent range attack, making you strong early. Although you can purchase both spells, miracles, and the appropriate catalysts at the Hub Merchant, Pyromancy is not so readily available. You also have the Great Swamp Ring to boost Pyromancies. The Pyromancer set offers okay physical defense, but very little toys. Cleric is level 7 with a Faith of 16. Other than a 12 in Strength, most of the physical stats are low. Starting with two Miracles, Heal and Force, which knock back nearby enemies and arrows. The Cleric's Sacred Chime does a slow heal as its weapon art. Your mace does good strike damage at close range, and the Warcry weapon art will increase the damage. The Cleric set is light and adds some physical defense, but has almost no poise. When you defeat a boss, the Ember is restored and you gain 30% more health and can summon help. You will be able to travel from bonfires that have been lit. Attune your spells, store items in your storage box, and increase your Estus strength by burning Undead Bone Shard. The Hubworld Merchant sells items and will buy your unwanted things. These are the items available when you first arrive. She sells a limited number of embers. Other consumables you can buy are Repair Powder, Purple Moss, Fire Bombs, Prism Stones, Homeward Bones, White, Soap Stone, and the Dried Finger, which allows you to engage in a special version of PvP. You buy the key to the tower in the hub world for 20,000 souls. For spells, she has Soul Arrow and Faron's Dart, both low-level ranged magic. And she also sells the Sorcerer's Staff needed to perform these spells. The only miracle she sells is Heal Aid, and you can buy a Talisman, but not the Cleric's Sacred Chime. Although I did get a chime as a random drop from the enemies before the tutorial boss. You can buy a dagger, short sword, scimitar, and halberd. The torch is used to illuminate one's surroundings, can inflict fire damage, but possesses no weapon arts. The leather shield and crimson parma don't have much for damage absorption and are best for parrying. The warrior's round shield has good magic defense but doesn't parry. Instead, you can activate your right hand weapon arts while still holding the shield in left hand. The large leather shield offers 85% physical damage absorption and the ability to parry. The chainmail set with leather gloves offers good physical defense but slightly lower poise for the weight than the knight or the herald set. Wood arrows and wood bolts can be purchased but no bows. There is a longbow on a corpse in the area directly after the hub world, and in the same area I got a crossbow to drop from one of the bowmen. To level up your character, you will need to talk to an NPC in the hub world. There is a blacksmith who will repair your weapons if they are broken. Resting at bonfires will repair weapons as long as they are not already broken. He is also where you want to manage your Estus. You start with 4 but can increase by reinforcing with Estus shards. And you can allot the flasks between regular HP Estus and new FP Ashen Estus. You will come to him to reinforce your weapons using Titanite. You will find a shard in the tutorial area but will need at least 2 for your first upgrade. Some enemies in the next area will randomly drop shards. You can infuse your weapons as well. Initially, you can use refined, raw, or fire gems, meaning you can immediately use the fire gem if that was your starting gift. This removes stat bonuses, lowered physical damage, and adds fire damage. And you can then continue to upgrade with Titanite. Refined gem lowers base damage and increases stat bonuses. Raw gem increases base damage and removes all stat bonuses. Hopefully, you were able to learn something that will help you in your journey to the Lord of Cinder without spoiling too much of the beginning areas. Farewell, Ashen One. May the flames guide thee. I mean, thanks for watching, and enjoy the game.